Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Our Community with Whitney Prather. Learn about what's happening in Stark and Tuscarora's counties and the surrounding areas. We're going to highlight interesting people, businesses, organizations, churches, events, and even more. Stay tuned. It's that time of the year again, time to deck the halls. And today we're talking to Deanne Bridenstine of Pure Design Interiors. Deanne has been working in interior design since 2003 when she graduated from Kent State University's College of Architecture in Environmental Design. Deanne leads the Pure Design Interiors team. They serve Northeast Ohio, but they support clients across the United States. Deanne is a coach to the Taylor Living Network of Designers and Owners, teaching best practices and design for custom closet and storage solutions. Deanne is still an intentional learner, which is what I love about her. She's constantly pursuing opportunities to grow her skills and experience. She's here to offer us tips on planning for holiday decor. She'll share her design philosophy and we'll look at the trends to come. Hey everyone, it's Whitney Prather and I'm so excited to be joined with Deanne Bridenstine from Pure Design Interiors. Deanne, how are you today? I'm awesome, Whitney. Thanks so much. How are you? Good. I'm so good. And I'm excited to learn about trends for the holiday season with decorating. Why don't you tell me some really cool things that you've been enjoying? Yeah. So obviously everybody's been staying home a lot this year. So I've actually done some updating around my own house. Um, I'm doing a lot of cooking actually, which doesn't have anything to do with design and more to do with just life at home. Um, So just getting ready for Thanksgiving and then Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, have been planning to bring out my decorations, but I haven't done it yet. So this weekend, hopefully I'm able to bring out all that stuff from the basement and get started. It's just such a joyous time to be able to just stay nestled in and do that with my family. What trends are you seeing um, this year or are there any trends for holiday Yeah, I don't know if this is necessarily a holiday trend. I think it's just a 2020 response, but many, many, many of us are embracing Christmas decor before Thanksgiving. So there's always been, you know, that battle about when is it too early for Christmas music and Christmas decor. And this year it's kind of like, you know what, forget it. We all just need some Christmas. So we actually have several clients right now who are I think my team goes this week and we do holiday decor for one of our clients. And then we have another one coming up before Thanksgiving and then another one right after. So we've got lots and lots of people who are just over it. We're ready to celebrate. (laughs) We're ready to be done with 2020. So that's, that's actually been a very common theme for us this year is earlier and earlier. Yeah. You know what? There was a time during all of this when it was new. I don't know if you saw this, but people were basically just saying, like, just bring out the Christmas lights. And it was like in May or something. Right. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So um, when you go and you, you decorate for these families that you do, these projects that you have, what are you guys doing? Are you guys doing Christmas trees? Are you doing entryways? What? We are doing the whole house. So we, for some clients, we actually have multiple Christmas trees. Um, We'll do the front door, the entryway, all of the seasonal decor, the mantle. It's all, all of it is possible. Um, But since we, you asked about trends just a minute ago, uh, because so many of the listeners are probably starting to think about Christmas and getting their decor out if they don't have it out already. I just wanted to free all of you from like the need for things to be precise. And there's, there's not a rule about Christmas can only be red and green and gold. Um, so we have clients who love maybe a more glam look. And so maybe it's silver and sparkles and blue, or one of our clients last year, we did all Buffalo check and red, uh, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, it could be lots of white and natural materials. And so so really take stock of where you're at this year. Take stock of what you already have in your, in your inventory of Christmas decor. Um, but don't be afraid to mix it up differently or to mix in something new uh, to make it feel fresh this year. 
Yeah. I love that you said that actually. I'm always super refreshed when I see something different um, than your traditional Christmas colors. I'm like, yes, I love, I love that. I I need to see pictures of it. In fact, (laughs) I'll I'll head over to your website or your Facebook to see that. So um, what are some of the traditions that you think you're, you inspire people to create through design? Just thinking about the holidays. Sure. So for me personally, I love a well-set table. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be um, a grand dinner party. It could be casual. One of the things that from my grandmother, actually, we would have Sunday dinner now and then, and she would get out the good China because she said there was nobody more important than her family. And sometimes I think we want to see it the other way that, well, if it's my family, then they get the everyday stuff. uh, And then guests and special people get the good stuff. So Mm -hmm. the other thing I learned from another elderly woman in our world is just put the China in the dishwasher. Like (laughs) if it's got gold leaf on it or silver leaf on it, don't do that. But otherwise just put it in the dishwasher. Like if something breaks, it breaks, but for the most part, it can go in the dishwasher. So, um, I love it. You just said a whole bunch of people for you right now. Just put that in the dishwasher, please. <laughs> First of all, take it out of the china closet and use, and use it. it. And then and then make cleanup easy on yourself. Exactly. Put it in the dishwasher. Yeah. So so use use what you have. Um, set the table. And if you've got little kids, get out construction paper and let them make place cards like with name cards or do things that are creative and reflect where your family is at right now. And it could be super simple. It could be your everyday dishes with special napkins that you pick up at the dollar store. Like it doesn't have to be a huge production. It can be something fun that feels cozy and authentic for your family and then let people get involved. Yeah, I love that you're saying that. I I appreciate your approach as a interior designer. You know, I think you're freeing a lot of people um, in in thinking that it doesn't have to be this crazy pressure filled experience. Use what you have. Be authentic to your space and to what you're interested in. I really love that. Um, which kind of just, you know makes me think of your, of your design philosophy. Do you have any design philosophies that you'd like to share? Oh, that's a great question. Um, For me and for my team, we really want your space to be a reflection of who you are as an individual, as a couple, as a family, whatever combination of family life that you're living right now. And so we tend to not be super fussy. Um, We have some awesome projects that we've loved. There are amazing photos on our website, but we're not going to be designing a space that when you walk in, you feel like you can't sit down. You can't have your family over. You can't think about what happens if your friends are there. God forbid somebody spill a glass of wine. Like we have to think about those things as we're, as we're walking through the design process. And we work with clients who are really maybe doing a lot of the work themselves, but are looking for a specific look. And so it, we don't have to be complicated. We don't have to be complicated in the design process. We don't have to be complicated about working with our clients. How did you get your start in design? Like, tell me about the story about how you selected this, you know, path for yourself. Sure. So if we look into the way, way back machine, (laughs) um, (laughs) let's go in the way, way back machine. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. So actually my, um, family would do a lot of like architecture and historical homes on vacations. And I really loved looking at the architecture of things and how it got put together and how it was built. So if you could see my biology notebook from high school, I was drawing buildings in the margins. Um, Not that dissecting a worm is not important, but I was not going to be medical. So I was drawing buildings in the margins. Uh, And so I actually had intended to look at architecture as a, as a major and had gone to Malone for a year. Uh, And when I went and looked, I went to Kent state for design there. Um, the person giving the tour said, hey, why don't you look at our design program? It's actually part of the School of Architecture, so it fits right in there. Uh, A lot of people think of it as being more decorative or art based, but when you you take the approach of looking at it from architecture, you really have to understand how things are built and how they get put together that way. Uh, And so I 
chose that as a career path and then worked at an architecture firm in Canton. And then, you know, everyone's career journey has different roads that get you where you're going. And so I ended up uh, incorporating as Pure Design Interiors about eight years ago and um, haven't haven't looked back. It's been amazing. That's awesome. So what has this journey been like for you? You've no, no doubt experienced many projects and many clients and um, now you have a team. So tell me about that. Yeah. So we actually have uh, myself, we have a full-time associate designer and then a part-time design assistant and then our office admin. Um, so if you call in someone on the team besides me is probably going to be your first point of contact. Um, but we have really spent a lot of time building a culture that reflects who we are as a team. Uh, and we do get to work with some really cool people. We have clients that we absolutely love um, doing both residential and commercial work. So last week, uh, Vinifera Wine to Whiskey opened in Cuyahoga Falls. Uh, we have another commercial project in Stowe right now that's that's more of office space. Uh, so we get to we get to do a lot of really cool creative things uh, and to be out in the community that way and supporting local businesses and participating with local businesses and seeing um, what's happening in their their little corner of the world. How would a person engage you if they were interested in securing your services residentially? Sure. The best way to find us um, would be to start with our website. It's pure dash design dash interiors.com. I know it's a long name with lots of dashes. Uh, or you can give us a call. Our office number is 330-546-0287. And our first step is just to do a discovery call with someone on the team and kind of talk about your project, find out what you need. Uh, if you are kind of in that category of, I sort of know what I'm doing and I just don't want to go off the rails, uh, we can work with that client. And usually we, we start with just a working consultation. Uh, and then if you need more help than that, or you say, please, please don't make me go to the store, just handle it all together. We can work with you that way as well. That's awesome. There's a lot of freedom there. So however you want to engage with pure design interiors, you definitely can. So let's unpack the the process just a little bit more. I'm interested on how you select and how you get to a point where, you know, a family or a person, individual contacts you and really wants to start from scratch with the design project. How do you walk them through, you know, making decisions? What kinds of information are you harvesting sure. from them for, from them in order to get to the desired Result. Discovery call and walk through. It's in architecture and design, it's called programming, um, but really it's discovery. It's asking questions about where you are right now, what you want your space to feel like. Many people already have maybe a Pinterest board or a house album or someplace that they've been curating thoughts. They have someone that they follow on Instagram just sort of a collection of things that, that are appealing to them. And so something that I find when I look at pictures that people have put together and I start asking questions, usually there's a theme. So if, if you've not ever looked at Pinterest or Howes, I'm sorry, I'm about to give you ideas that will take up tons of your time, <laughs> um, but just start curating photos of anything that you like. And as we start asking questions, it might be, hey, you know what, all of your photos have these stained beams up at the ceiling. And maybe you didn't even realize that. Maybe you were picking them because they were bright and airy and open, but that's part of the, the layers of design decisions that got made to create this cohesive space. So we're going to start to uncover what things are really appealing to you. Uh, and that's we do a lot of, of remodel work and we do a lot of new construction work. Um, in addition to helping clients with, hey, I just need some new rugs and a sofa and some artwork. Um, but we do much more, I would say, remodeling and then new construction. Uh, and so kind of walking through that process, it's true if you are wanting to remodel a kitchen, uh, you've curated photos of things that you like. Uh, you're telling me that you really like that Joanna Gaines Magnolia home kind of look. So that's communicating, hey, we like, like lots of soft, light colors. Um, maybe you just want to make choices as you're looking at a remodel that 
you're going to get the longest lifespan possible out of those selections. So if you're making a decision today about kitchen cabinets, maybe we don't want that, that steely gray color because that's a trend and we're getting to the end of that trend. Maybe we want to make a choice that is forward looking or we're going to go to white because it's going to be timeless. Yeah. I'm definitely feeling inspired. <laughs> you mentioned trends just to mention a, a moment ago. Um, what are some of the 2021 trends that you're seeing? Anything that you're loving specifically? I am super excited about Sherwin-Williams Color of the Year. What is they it? They named Urbane Bronze as their Color of the Year. And it's it, it's not all the way to a black. It's definitely a bronze, so it's warmer. Um, but I think in general, we've seen over the last few years, we're moving away from that gray, gray, gray trend into neutral naturals. So they're warmer, they're grayish, they're bone or they're off-white. Um, can you see the name of that color yes. again? It's urbane bronze. Oh, cool. And it's it's just a really it's just a great color. It feels very grounded when you see it. It's got it's got the ability, if you were to do a whole room in it, it's gonna wrap itself around you. Um, but really just that natural kind of feeling is my favorite of the current trends. Um, I was just in High Point for Furniture Market several weeks ago. And when you go to fall market, you're really looking at things that will be available in stores in the spring. And I was kind of surprised to see lots of rust color again, and that's not my favorite. So they were matching a lot of the rust with the golds and the greens. So kind of a 70s flashback look. Um, so you don't have to embrace it. You don't have to love it. I don't love rust, but I did love the greens and some of the, the pops of yellow. So there are ways to incorporate those kinds of trends uh, into your house without going crazy overboard so that five years from now, when you are done with it, you can let it go without having spent a ton of money. Um, some other trends that I'm seeing are everything is very tactile. So it has a texture to it. When you when you see it, it has a visual texture. When you touch it, it feels the way it looks. Mm. I think that everything should feel the way it looks. But you're seeing that in, in backsplash tile where it's a textured sculpted tile. Um, in fabrics, they have much more texture to them. You can find mixed media art pieces and it just gives this extra layer of dimension to whatever it is that you're looking at. I love it. Oh, I love all of it, girl. This is like one of the best interviews ever because I just love, I'm not a designer. I need help in this area, but I am like a lot of people. I love to consume you know, home interior design content. So this is just filling my love tank in a way that you probably don't even realize. So <laughs> um, how are you working with people during this time? You, you did mention that you have been um, doing very well in business because people are in their homes and they're looking around. But, you know, what are some of the safety measures and what are some of the things that you have done to make people just feel a little bit extra, you know, safe? Absolutely. So there is a lot that we can do completely virtually. So we use Zoom, we use Google Hangouts. Um, my team can also use Microsoft Teams. So as much as possible, we've been doing virtual meetings um, for clients who are comfortable having us come to your home. We're wearing masks, they're wearing masks. It's really kind of a comfort level for the person that we're going to see. So we've had clients where we needed to reschedule because maybe they had been in contact with someone. Um, but kind of once we, we have the parameters for your project, we're able to kind of move everything forward, even if we can't be face to face. That's wonderful. I think, you know, through this whole thing, we've become so much more um, agile and flexible. And um, I talked to a real estate agent not too long ago, and they were doing things over Zoom, too. So I just I love to hear that things are still able to move forward, projects are able to move forward, and you can do so in a safe manner. Um, well, I have had such a pleasure connecting with you. I want to thank you for your time today. Is there anything else that you want to say? Oh, you need to tell us where we can find you. That's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, you can find us online at pure-design-interiors.com. 
Uh, I'm pretty active on Instagram. I'm at designer DM. And then you can also reach us by phone at 330-546-0287. And you also, before we leave, you also do some live content too. So people can kind of follow you in on projects on Facebook, mm-hmm. right? Do you do that on Instagram as well? Um, I have not mastered live on Instagram, but we do some video on Instagram. So yeah, we are on Facebook as um, forward slash pure design interiors. Nice, nice. Yeah. Definitely see if you can catch Deanna, um, Deanne on live. She um, walks through some of her projects and it's just so interesting. So again, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for filling up my design love tank. I really appreciate what you do in this community and making it beautiful. Thanks so much for having me, Whitney. Thank you to our guest today and thank you for tuning in. Cheers. Until next time.